We've talked about non-German access formations quite a bit on this channel. Volunteers from the Netherlands, Norway, Denmark, Belgium and France, they volunteered to fight on the Eastern Front. But what about national armies that fought on the Eastern Front? In this video, we're going to talk about the Royal Hungarian Army of the Second World War. Keep watching. Hey, good to have you back on the channel. If you're happy to be new, I'm Stefan. I'm a Dutch history teacher and I'm hustling history for you. I make videos about the history. So if you find it interesting, consider subscribing. And if you want to support me, well, please do so. You can do that via PayPal and Patreon. The links are in the description. Perhaps the biggest sore point in Hungarian history is the Treaty of Trianon. Drafted during the Paris Peace Conference that also drafted the Treaty of Versailles for Germany. Trianon was signed in 1920 and the territory of Hungary that was before that together with Austria in a dual monarchy was severely reduced with a population drop from 20 to 7.6 million. Hungary was a medium sized country before now became a landlocked small state surrounded with new larger neighbors such as Poland and the Kingdom of Serbs, Croats and Slovenes which later would become Yugoslavia. As for the Hungarian army, well that was reduced to 35,000 men and only light weapons were permitted. National conscription was introduced in 1939 and from the age of 21, later 19, Hungarian men were drafted in the Royal Hungarian Army. These Hungarians took three years of military training. Now, I read that the Germans were actually, ethnic Germans were overrepresented in the officer corps. Many of them, they learned Hungarian and adopted Hungarian names. On the 1st of March 1940, Hungary formed three field armies. Each army was commanded by a general or colonel general, each with three corps. Also, a separate Carpathian group was formed. This had to do with covering the so-called lost territories. I get to this later. Of the 35 brigades raised, 27 were infantry. From 1939, also labor battalions were raised. And these were filled with people that were living within Hungary's borders, but the Hungarian government deemed these people as unreliable. I'm talking about ethnic Romanians, Slovaks and Serbs. Naval forces did exist since there was the Danube River, so there were river forces. After all, Hungary's regent, Milos Horsti, he was originally an admiral. Hungary also had a 5,734 men strong air force and one parachute battalion. And then there was also the Royal Hungarian Gendarmerie, which had around 22,000 gendarmes in July 1944. Most of these did guard duties, patrol the countryside and also conducted anti-partisan operations in Yugoslavia. Now, before we're going to discuss where all these Hungarian units were stationed, let's take a look at the uniform and the equipment first. Now, as with each army, big or small, there are countless variations and exceptions. So we're going to focus on the ordinary rank and file soldier. What did the Hungarian infantryman look like? The Hungarian helmet was the M1938 helmet. The Germans allowed and assisted the Hungarians in copying their design of their steel helmet. Therefore, the World War II produced M38 Hungarian steel helmet is nearly identical to the German M1935 with some minor differences. Rougher finishing, different liner and rivets position. It was painted in Hungarian brown green. That brings me to the tunic, which was brown green as well. In World War II, the Hungarian soldier wore the M1926 field tunic with a standing collar or the M1939 with a turnover collar. For infantry, the collar patches were green. What's quite unique are the trousers. Let's take a look at that. The Hungarian soldier wore these tapered trousers, tied in a calf, like we saw in many World War I and World War II armies, combined with low ankle boots plus a leather anklet. And this is fairly unique because most soldiers had like these tapered trousers and low ankle boots, but then with puttees or leather gaiters. And you know, if I look at this, like, I'm sorry, you know, like, no, it, 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 it looked like something is missing. It, it, no, sorry, 
Interesting enough, the Hungarian soldiers used to wear patis, but in 1925 they got rid of those. The standard infantry rifle was the FAG-35 rifle that was issued from 1935 onwards. Border guards sometimes made still use of the obsolete Mandeke M1895 from the times of the Austro-Hungarian Empire. From 1939, there was also the M1939 Kiradi submachine gun, also known as the Danuvia 39M. It saw an updated version in 1943. Some Hungarian troops made use of the captured Soviet submachine gun, the PPSH-41. Furthermore, soldiers had a belt with ammunition pouches supporting straps, backpack with overcoat, bayonet and frog, spade, bread bag, canvas gas mask bag, mess tin and aluminium water bottle. In 1938, Hitler annexed Austria. Next on his list was the dismemberment of Czechoslovakia. Hitler, he promised the Hungarians Slovakia if they would provide military assistance. However, the Hungarian government found his way too risky and did not want it to be involved in a full blown European war. Yet Hitler did manage to acquire Sudetenland after the Munich conference. After this, the Hungarian Czechoslovak negotiations took place to reach an agreement on the issue concerning the Hungarian minority in Czechoslovakia. An agreement wasn't made and border clashes occurred. Britain and France had no interest and thus a German-Italian arbitration took place. Well, actually two of them took place that were known as the first and the second Vienna Award. Hungary recovered a lot of territory, not all the territory that they lost, but a substantial amount. If you want to know the details about this, I made a detailed video about this. The link is in the top right corner. Hungary also did take part in the Axis invasion of Yugoslavia that started in April 1941. They deployed a parachute battalion which recovered several bridges from the Yugoslavs. Hungary occupied the Bačka Branja regions, today known as Vojvodina, northern Serbia. Hungarian rule was harsh. In January 1942, almost 4,000 civilians, mostly Jews and Serbs, were killed by Hungarian troops during an anti-partisan operation, which became known as the Massacre of Novi Sad. On the 22nd of June 1941, the Germans invaded the USSR. Hungary was willing to join this attack, but was not prepared for it. Hungarian Chief of Staff, Lieutenant General Henrik Werth, he supported the German attack on the USSR. Miklos Horthy, he was a staunch anti-communist as well. However, the Hungarian army was not prepared for this. The Germans informed the Hungarians that they would welcome Hungarian assistance. The Hungarian Air Force directed an attack against the Galician town of Stanislaw, today known as ivano frankivsk in Ukraine on the early morning of June 27th. Ground troops crossed the border at Folofes in the afternoon as firefights with Soviet border guards had already taken place in the morning and so Hungary had joined Hitler's crusade. If you'd like to learn more about the details and the run-up to Hungary's invasion of the USSR, also with the mysterious bombing of Kassa, you can check out the video that I posted in the top right corner. Hungarian forces reached the Dniester River on the 7th of July and on the 10th they took Kamienets Podilski. Turning northeastwards, they defended 120 miles of the Dnieper bridgehead from Nikopol to Dnieper-Petrovsk from the 30th of August till the 10th of October 1941. After that, they crossed the river Donetsk. The Hungarians delivered more troops to participate in the German summer offensive the following year known as Falblau, where they fought at Voronezh. During the Battle of Stalingrad, the Hungarians had to protect the northern flanks and were overstretched, which resulted in tremendous losses. Estimations of the Hungarian casualties vary between 100 to 150,000. In the meanwhile, other Hungarian troops occupied parts of the USSR, Ukraine 1941-42 and parts of Ukraine and Belarus in 43-44. Here they had to secure supply routes and conduct sweeps against Soviet partisans. They were also stationed in Poland, but Hungary refused to aid the Germans in crushing the 1944 Warsaw Uprising. Germany became aware of the fact that the Hungarians were war Wary. And Hitler ordered the invasion of Hungary in March 1944, this was known as Operation Marguerite, where the German forces took control of the country to make sure the Hungarians would remain at their 
side. When it turned out Regent Mittelhorty didn't comply, the Germans launched Operation Panzerfaust. They removed Horthy from power and installed the Hungarian ultra nationalist fascist Arrow Cross movement led by Ferenc Zalasi. By that time, the Soviets were already deep inside Hungary's borders. Near the end of 1944, two Hungarian Waffen SS formations were raised, where some 50,000 Hungarian nationalists volunteered for. There also existed the 22nd SS Volunteer Cavalry Division Maria Theresa, which comprised of ethnic German conscripts from Hungary. Towards the end of 1944, a climactic battle took place at the Hungarian capital of Budapest, which left the city in ruins and countless of lives, both military and civilian, were lost. In March 1945, the Germans launched an offensive near Lake Balaton, known as Operation Spring Awakening, but to no avail. Eventually, Hungary was completely conquered by the Soviet forces. Over 300,000 Hungarian soldiers would end up in Soviet POW camps with 251,000 repatriated in December 1948. Also many ordinary Hungarian civilians were deported. The Hungarians would live under communist rule till 1989. I'm sure some of you will have some interesting additional information so if you have that leave it in the comments below the video. Related topics about how effective the Hungarian units actually were on the Eastern Front, the whole Fredding Salasi error cross thing, I hope to cover that in the future. And if you want to support me so I can do that, please do so. You can go to my Patreon page or PayPal, the links are in the description. I want to thank you for watching. Do not forget to subscribe. Big shout out to my patrons. Philip Jordan, Jakob Musland, Nick Taranova, Hele Bear, Mark Little Hale, Janusz Jankiewicz, Joan Kekoa, Justin Trebel, Peter King, Tanya Dixie, Henry Clarkson, Rob Park, Andrea Martic, and Fernando Lopez Ojeda. And if you'd like to learn about Hungarian history, I have a whole playlist for you with episodes that I recorded both at home and on location is right here. More will be coming. Thanks for watching. I see you later.